Hello everyone. Welcome to this uh, first video blog of 2018. Just got a couple of things I want to share with you um, that uh, the Lord has been speaking, as we often do, about this new season that we're in. And I hope most of you can feel the transition that we have made as we, you know, turn the calendar into a new year. I know I've said before I observe the Jewish calendar, you know, most importantly, but but this, this year, there's been a real transition on our civil calendar as well, and I want to talk about that here in just a moment. But first, I've, uh, Caleb has told me that uh, many of you have written and asked about my, my health situation. Most of you have prayed for me, and I'm very, very thankful. The Lord has done some amazing things. You know, I was looking at some pretty serious back surgery just a few months back, and and um, thanks to the Lord and his, the prayers of the people, some, some great things have happened and I'm much, much better. I just feel like this is a new day, a new era, a new season, renewed vigor. Um, you know, I've had so many of my friends prophesy it's time to get back in the fight. And I agree with that. I think it's time to, to get back in there and begin to prophesy and and uh, begin to pursue even more vigorously the things that we believe are coming for this new season. And as I ended the last year, I, I was um, just drawn to, to Paul's account of his own commissioning experience where he was relating to King Agrippa what happened to him when the Lord appeared to him on the road to Damascus. And there was some unusual wording there that the Lord has just seemed to emphasize with me in that experience where the Apostle Paul says, the Lord says to him, stand up on your feet. Saul, stand up on your feet. Uh, for I have appeared to you. That's pretty amazing. Stand up on your feet because I've appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you as a minister and as a, um, a voice, a witness, a testifier, not only of what you have seen, but of what you're going to see of what I'm going to appear to you is actually what it says, which is kind of an unusual phrase. And I really believe that is going to be indicative of a number of people. For whatever reason, the Lord says, now stand up on your feet, gird up your loins. Uh, if you've been in a season of mourning, mourn no more. Moses is dead, but now it's time for Joshua. Uh, rise up, stand on your feet, be a man, gird up your loins, take courage, be strong. That's the admonitions that are, that are coming today. And Paul says to, to uh, I mean, the Lord says to Paul, stand up on your feet because I've appeared to you. And, and there's a divine commissioning. There is a manifestation of God, a very significant one. And the Lord says, you're going to be a testifier and a minister of not only what you have seen, but what you're going to see. And what I heard the Lord saying as we came to the end of this last year and beginning of this year, there are two things there what you have seen and what you're going to see. And we, it is important that we embrace and have established as a firm foundation inside of us what we have seen in order to be postured for what he is going to appear in the future. And so often, you know, prophetic things come and we, we don't really seem to get them integrated into the fullness of who we are and woven into the very fabric of who we are and how we think and how we believe and how we pray. And, and the Lord is saying, you, you know, before you can get the new, you've got to really embrace what I've given to you. And, uh, and one of the things I felt like the Lord telling me personally, and I believe this will probably be true of a lot of you, go back to the words that you know without doubt are me. So I did that at the end of last year. I went through a whole litany of prophetic words that I have gotten and I narrowed down about five or six major words that I had no question came from God. And I emphasized those words and I pursued the reality of those words and I was doing what the Lord told Paul to do for that for, you know, the things that I have seen, I want to believe and I want to have integrated in my life and I'm going to begin to believe for what's coming because what's coming is unprecedented. And I like what the Lord told Paul. He said, because you're going to bring people out of darkness into light. You're going to open the eyes of the people. An anointing is going to be given to you to open the eyes of the people. And I believe, I fervently believe in 2018 that an anointing is going to be given to leadership to release a revelatory mantle 
over bodies of people so that all of a sudden their eyes are opened and they begin to see spiritual reality. They begin to see uh, realms of darkness that have held them back and begin to embrace the realms of light that would move them forward. Uh, so he says, you're going to open the eyes of the people and you're going to bring them out of darkness into light. And I'm prophesying to you in 2018 that a lot of meetings are going to take place where people literally feel the transition of their own lives coming out of darkness into light. Almost as if a light switch is cut on all of a sudden and where there had been murkiness and confusion and and lack of clarity, there's going to suddenly be a bright, brilliant light and you're going to see clearly and then that's going to leave you with a choice. Am I going to choose to believe? Am I going to choose to walk this path or am I going to reject it? So next year is going to be a year of great choices, great, significant, life-altering choices. So he says to Paul that uh, you're going to open the eyes of the people to bring them out of darkness into light from the dominion of Satan into the dominion of God. And, and that's what I am seeing for this remnant of God's people, that even the influence, even the residue of darkness is going to begin to come off of people and they're going to enter into the dominion, the complete rulership of the dominion of God functioning in their lives. And I know that's a big thing to say, but you watch and see by this time next year and see if we haven't had some of that happen where the people are all of a sudden out from under the influence of this cloud that has seemingly attached itself to so many. And now all of a sudden there is this brilliance and this brilliant light that is going to begin to come to bring them out of the dominion of Satan into the dominion of God that they may receive the forgiveness of sins and obtain an inheritance among those that are being sanctified by faith in Jesus Christ. And that is our commission for this year. I believe that. That's my commission for this year. I believe that's my commission to begin to bring people out of one realm into another realm, out of the natural realm into the supernatural realm, from the seen realm into the unseen realm, that there is an anointing, a grace, a favor that will help us take people from where they are more into where they need to be because this is a season of movement. Movement is important. Moving in the direction that God has, has given to us. I was also just this morning, I know that's a very brief, just a very brief outline of what, what I've been hearing concerning that, but I just wanted to submit that to you um, and hope that maybe you'll pursue the Holy Spirit to begin to get greater understanding. But I've also been in Jeremiah 33, which has a central theme, a, a similar theme. And Jeremiah 33, 1 says, Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah a second time. Remember, Paul, I'm gonna, you're going to prophesy what I have appeared to you and what I'm going to appear to you, what, I, what you have seen and what you're going to see. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah a second time. And there's a subsequent revelation. There is a follow-up revelation that is going to be coming to many, but it's important that we get the first revelation grounded in order to receive the upcoming revelation that we're going to receive. And of course, the most, one of the most well-talked about and famous you know, scriptures from Jeremiah, of course, Jeremiah 33, 33, 3, call upon me and I will answer you and tell you great and mighty things. You know, we breeze through that, but what I heard so clearly just a couple of days ago, now call upon me. It's like in one season, we've had some warfare. <laughs> we've had some difficulties. And, and, and sometimes we may have just said, God, where are you? <laughs> it's like, God, we're crying out to you and I don't hear anything. I, I've been there myself a few times, you know, and maybe leaders are not always as willing to admit that, but that's just the truth of the matter. I talk to leaders and sometimes we're crying out just like you are. And Lord, where are you? I need to hear your voice. And now the Lord is saying, call to me, call to me and I will answer you. Not only that, I'm going to tell you some great and mighty things that have not even entered into your mind. Ephesians 3, God doing exceedingly and abundantly beyond all that we could ask or think. And, and I really felt like the Lord talking to me over the last couple of days about where in seasons past, maybe, maybe many have over-promised and under-produced, you know, under-delivered. But I, I don't believe that's going to be the case. I believe we're going to promise in consistency with what the Lord has said 
and then give parameters for the Lord to exceedingly and abundantly go beyond our expectations, to exceed our own expectations. Call to me and I will answer you. That's your admonition this year. Call to the Lord and just see what He will say to you and begin to tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. And I want to close with this because I want to leave these brief. But here's just a couple of the attributes, a couple of the, the environmental um, influences that we're going to begin to see in this year where the Lord is saying, Behold, I will bring it to health and healing. Health and healing. I will heal them. I will reveal to them an abundance of peace and truth. That's what I'm hearing from God. Listen, let's be frank about it. We're the ones with good news. There's only, it's not a good news, it's the good news. There is the good news. Jesus Christ is a son of God and he is raised from the dead. That's the good news. And we're going to be carriers of this gospel of good news. And, you know, I know things have been hard. Believe me, I know as well as anyone out there, things have been hard. But we have good news. We have a good future. <laughs> we have hope. God is on the throne. Not only is He on the throne, He's inside of me and He's inside of you. So we have hope. There is no such thing as hopelessness in the kingdom of God because we always have the hope that the creator of the universe is going to release something in our life. So He's going to reveal abundance of peace and truth. I will restore the fortunes of my people and I will rebuild them as they were at first. And one final scripture, and it will be to me, the Lord speaking, it will be to the Lord a name of joy and praise and glory before all the nations of the earth, which will hear of all the good that I will do for them. And they will fear and tremble because of all the good and all the peace that I will make for it. And of course, that's talking about restoration of Israel. And so I am, I am believing for and even prophesying seasons of goodness and restoration. I know this is not the first time we've said that, but it's been reemphasized even since the beginning of this, of this year to begin to speak into the hearts of people good things, peace, prosperity, restoration. If the enemy comes in to steal, if the thief is caught, he must restore it seven times over. And there are other places you might could even say a 100-fold return. And even Deuteronomy 111 where the Lord says, I will increase you a thousand-fold more than you are and bless you as I have promised you. So I am uh, I'm expectant for this year to be different than it has been in the past. And I hope and pray that this little brief word will give you that hope and encouragement to press in even harder. And if I can just leave you with this, call upon the Lord. Call upon the Lord. I know you're weary. I know things have been difficult, but call upon the Lord and see if He will answer you and begin to tell you great and mighty things that haven't even yet entered into your heart and mind. Grant that, Lord, I ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 